Oh no, here, here comes trouble. We've got trouble in the front, trouble at the back. Ooh, yeah. Hyenas are very social animals. So they live in very complicated uh, matriarchal societies. Matriarchal meaning they're dominated by a female. You know, you not. You're not going to do it for me. Are you going to do it for me? Lift. Lift your leg. She thinks she's more dominant than me. That's because she is. Hello, guys. Hello. <laughs> Just to talk about the dominance order or the hierarchy, the um, way it works in a hyena society is that you have the dominant female, the matriarch, and then you have all the uh, females ranking under her, and then you have a dominant male and all the males under him. This is Nancy trying to intimidate Woody, and he's obviously getting the better of her now. And now she's going to submit by lifting her leg. There she is, submitting. She might even put out of her put out her pseudo penis, which she's not doing. But immediately when Nancy says, "Hey, I want you to submit to me. I want you to stop concentrating on Kevin and start concentrating on me," Woody does it because she knows that if she doesn't, then there's going to be trouble. The highest ranking male ranks lower than the uh, lowest ranking female. We need to talk about Ringo. You see, always on the skirts, always just observing, not getting too involved in the girls' politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ringo. Ringo, Ringo, yeah, yeah, look. No, Bossy Pants won't allow Ringo. See what Bossy Pants wants. Now you're running away, why are you running away? Come, you're normally so cheeky, eh? Cheeky Charlie. He's a male, so naturally he's the lowest ranking in this clan. It doesn't matter what he does. He's never gonna be higher ranking than Woody he's always going to be the lowest ranking because he's a male. Keeping a healthy social distance. Yeah, just talking about the dominance. So an individual that's very aggressive and very dominant may very well get better access to food. Um, and you wouldn't be wrong in assuming that that would also translate to better access to mating rights. The female Genitalia is androgenized, um, masculinized. The females have a penis looking structure, what they call a pseudo penis. And uh, the pseudo penis looks like a male penis. It has a little glance penis on the tip, and it has a shaft that's erectile. And she even has um, a, a sac with pseudo testes. So the matriarch doesn't look at a male and go, ooh, he works out. Ooh, he's, he's a strong boy. Ooh, I like that. He's a, you know, a gym boy. Um, no, no, no. She looks at a whole bunch of qualities before uh, she will mate with him or choose him to mate with. And uh, there's no such thing in a hyena society as the male just taking what he wants because copulation <laughs> or mating takes place through that pseudo phallus so as you can imagine if she doesn't want to be accepting of a male to mate with her it ain't gonna happen <laughs> 
Gimana? Ilise Gapa Papa. Yapa Apa. That's how you know talk, by the way. Uh, the female invests an awful amount of uh, energy into raising the youngsters. When you talk about animals and their investment in their young, like humans invest in their young, like primates in their young, and elephants in their young, hyenas rate right up there in uh, even allowing their, their cubs to suckle uh, well over a year. So, as I mentioned, they have these deciduous teeth, so you can imagine they little brutuses straight out of the womb. That's got to hurt. <laughs> and then she allows that, even when all the, the teeth start to develop all the way past the year, to, um, to, to obviously boost the development. Um, they have second to uh, polar bear milk, the highest nutritional value in milk. I can talk about them for hours, as you can see, guys. I mean, that's why, because of the high caloric value of the milk, uh, a, a, a female hyena can actually leave the cubs at a den site, go wandering for vast, 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 vast distances, even leaving them for days and come back and then suckle again. So cubs can really go a long, long time without um, milk. Unlike lions, again, lions need constant attention and constant suckling. So these little hyenas, um, because they are, are, are so agile and so mobile, they can dig their own little tunnels in these um, disused artifact or warthog burrows and they make these little tunnels that, that will only come out for their mother. So another hyena can come to the den and try and call them out, not going to come out. As soon as mom comes, then they'll come out. So it's another added protective mechanism to keeping them safe. It's really, really clever. Um, hyenas, in fact, um, have shown remarkable cognitive abilities. Um, in some problem-solving experiments, collaborative problem-solving experiments, where they had to actually work together as a team, hyenas um, outperformed chimpanzees. So, I mean, primates. These are the animals that we often hear people say are so closely related to humans, so we can relate to them. A really, really cool group of animals. They are wonderful. Wonderful to watch, wonderful to be a part of, and also wonderful that you are able to walk amongst them. As I think you can see, I can talk about hyenas forever. They are so interesting. I never get bored. After all the years of working with them, I just um, have this renewed fascination every time I interact with them. Um, it's, they are so clever. There's so much going on in that head. And I'm just so happy that the world is starting to get that and starting to understand that these animals are just so important in the environment and in the ecosystem and that they serve such an important function in, in showing the health of habitats. So in habitats where hyenas once were, which is pretty much in most parts of, of Africa, and you know, in habitats now that they don't exist, you can see that the ecosystem is suffering, not thriving. So you know, um, if, if one can start to restore these habitats and ensure that these wonderful animals come back and serve their purpose in uh, the balancing uh, out these ecosystems. I think that is what we should be aiming for and should be looking for. Healthy habitats thriving with spotted hyenas and other apex predators. That is hopefully where we're going to see the future of conservation efforts. Um, restoring areas, protecting these areas so that these key species can thrive.